Hi everybody and welcome to Vlada's Place. As a child, I grew up in a region where we predominantly grew peppers and cabbage. In fact, they call this a cabbage people. So if there's anything I know well, that would be kraut. So let me show you how to make a good kraut. We are starting with the mid-size cabbage heads. Use a good strong knife to dig out the core of the cabbage. I usually make a triangle like this. I will dig out initially, dig out the core, and then I will go back to dig a little bit deeper because I need a bigger opening to uh, put the salt in. So go back, dig a little bit more, and then pour salt in this opening and pour uh, salt, enough salt that would go all the way to the top of the cabbage head. The goal here is to have enough salt to prevent spoiling cabbage while it's fermenting. So salt will penetrate in between the leaves, so it will help to control the fermentation, fermentation and um, the speed, the taste and uh, flavor of the cabbage. So make sure you have enough salt or your um, pickling process can easily spoil. Once you have them all ready, we will add water. And, is, and if you can notice, I have a hose on the side of a dish, slowly adding water. Because what we want to do here is allow water to uh, slowly seep into the salt. So the salt has opportunity to dissolve and go down into the cabbage. So you see what's happening here? Uh, this, is, um, this is the way you wanna pour water over cabbage and you want to pour maybe about an inch above the last cabbage head. Use a plate and a heavy object to submerge all the cabbage in the water. That's very important. I'm using a gallon of water, but if uh, you have a big heavy rock, that would work even better. Cover it and store it in a garage on a chair, and I will short, shortly explain to you why we should store it on okay, a chair. Okay, so it's been three days, and the uh, temperatures in California have been in a triple digits, which means the fermentation will go rapidly. So I'm going to go in and check it out, and I'm going to show you a neat trick which will help uh, keep the cabbage uh, fermenting equally, and it will give you good, the best uh, crowd flavor. The time of rotating water depends on the temperature you are fermenting your cabbage in. So as you see, we have uh, it's been only three days and it's time to rotate the brine. And this is what I'm doing. I am uh, taking the brine from the bottom where a concentration of salt is the highest and I'm pouring it over. And I will do this about five times, about five gallons. And uh, cabbage is almost ready. It's about 90% to where I would like it to be to, uh, in regard to sourness. So I'm going to now transfer the leaves into a, another container. And I have just a, a pretzel box or pretzel uh, container here, plastic container, which I will use to store the cabbage. So what I normally do is I will peel out the outer layers for the cabbage rolls and then the hearts we will serve immediately and I will make a salad out of the hearts. Hearts in general are a little less sour so they're very pleasant for salads and they also have a smaller leaves so they're not normally good for stuffed cabbage. So once you take the outside layer just fold it like this. And so this is what I'm gonna do with the otter leaves. I'm just gonna fold them, and then I'm gonna set them in this container. Like this, nice and tight. And keep in mind that um, the pickling process uh, will not stop completely. Even though we're transferring this crowd to the fridge, the fermentation will continue just much, much slower. So this is the inner part of a cabbage, and I'm gonna check if any of these leaves are good for cabbage rolls. And you can see these are smaller, so I'd rather use these for salad. So just drain as much as juice as you can. It's 
So as I shared with you, um, figuring out when the fermentation has taken uh, place and when the cabbage is ready can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're doing this for the first time. Uh, one of the good um, ways to know is that when cabbage leaves become soft. So you see these are nice and soft and you can mold them, you can fold them. So that's the one way you know cabbage is fermented. Another thing is to go deep inside the cabbage head, take a piece and just try it. So in addition to saltiness, you should taste the sourness and uh, uh, fermentation taking place, the meat, which means the cabbage is, is ready. Uh, there is a, such a thing as over fermenting and uh, that's not very good. So it's better to be under fermented than over fermented. So nice golden color like we have on this cabbage. It's also an, a good indicator that uh, fermentation is done. Okay. And again, um, we are transferring these to the, uh, into a fridge, in a container and into a fridge. And as I mentioned, fermentation will continue to take place, except it's just gonna uh, slow down now. As you store them in a container, press on them, because we want them nice and tight. All right, so um, these two I'm gonna leave out because kids want me to make some sour, uh, stuck cabbage for them. The cabbage is not fully fermented. I'm, as I said, I'm stopping the fermentation process by putting the cabbage in a fridge. So instead of pouring clean water, cold clean water, which I would normally do if the fermentation was done, I'm going to pour some of this brine, salty brine, and allow cabbage to continue to ferment. I'm doing this because I wanna slow down fermentation because the temperatures in my garage are extremely high. Anyhow, cover your uh, cabbage, submerge it, and set it in a fridge. Stored like this, cabbage will be good for three to four weeks in a fridge, sometimes even longer. And it's going in my spare fridge outside in a garage right next to my precious olive oil. Now, in regard to brine, you're welcome to store the brine in jars and drink it. My father loved this stuff. I do have to warn you that it's very salty, but there are a lot of good probiotics in here. So if you do drink it, drink it in moderation. And for those who have a, have a higher blood pressure, please avoid stuff like this. But uh, if it's cured perfectly, this stuff is actually very, very tasty and very refreshing. This is where real fun begins. So I'm preparing some leaves for stuffed cabbage while the cabbage hearts soak in a cool, clean water to dilute the salt content. I will rinse them a couple or three times before I will drain them really well and chop them into pieces like this. Once you're done, pour a handsome portion of olive oil, some hot pepper flakes, and a black pepper. Mix it all really well and then transfer it into a glass container, cover them, and store them in a the fridge. This is one amazing salad. With salad done, I will focus on making a stuffed cabbage. And I have a stuffed cabbage instructions on YouTube if you're interested to make stuffed cabbage yourself. My passion and mission in life is to pass on old way of cooking, preparing and preserving foods that humans have been doing for centuries and centuries. I formed a nonprofit organization with goal to pass on these skills onto the younger generations and to help reconnect families and communities through healthy, homemade and homegrown foods. To find out more about our initiative and nationally distributed television program called Cooking and Kids, please visit vladevi.com. Thank you all for watching and until the next time, please take good care of yourselves and those around you. Bye.